Yeah, buddy. All right, well, first off, I want to give a couple of shout outs. So, um, uh, Kevin Kirby, thank you for uh, approaching me. I appreciate that. Um, you guys don't realize what that really means to me. Uh, when somebody just out of the ordinary comes up and says, hey, it's you, and turns out it's one of my viewers. And, uh, you know, to me, that is the best feeling in the world. Now, don't take my facial expressions to heart. Because when somebody comes up to me and says, hey, it's you, my first thought is, who the hell are you? And, you know, reason being, you know, it it's hard for me to realize that there's so many people who see me and recognize me, but understand I don't get to see you guys. So, um, but I mean, I absolutely love it when people come up to me and, you know, introduce themselves and you know, tell them or tell me what they think of my videos. And, um, but you know, me and Mr. Kirby there, we shot the shit for a few minutes. And, um, but you know, I just wanted to say thank you for approaching me. That was kudos to you, man. That was huge. Um, got to have lunch with my buddy Casey. Casey, I've known since uh, day one on the bus ride to CR England. Um, you know, we, we ended up being uh, roommates at the Travel Inn through CR England. We did our training through CR England. Casey tested out the day after I did. We both passed on the first shot. And uh, it just so happened we've managed to meet up a couple of times out here on the road. And uh, this one here was a little freaky though because, you know, if you really think about it, you know, being over the road truck drivers, we could be anywhere in this country at any given time. And for two people who know each other, um, you know, we weren't talking on the phone or anything. I just, I pulled into a loves, I backed into a spot and then all of a sudden he pulls up in front of me cause he pulled in at the same time, you know, and it, it turned out, um, you know, he was heading one direction. I was heading the other. We got off at the same exit to stop at the loves, both doing our thirties. So to me, that's just mind boggling. Um, you know, I, I love doing that stuff. So that was cool um where am i i am currently in my favorite spot in the whole entire country now for those of you that know me i am a huge weather buff i love you know recording the weather and uh, so currently i am in the city and state that has the largest and most expensive and deadly tornado in U.S. history, recorded history. So, currently I am sitting in Joplin, Missouri. Um, unfortunately, there's no weather to speak of, but uh, we're picking up a load here in a couple hours, and uh, we're taking it out to uh, Murfreesboro, North, nope, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Now, yesterday... Nashville, Tennessee got spanked with tornadoes and um, so I'm going to end up missing it by two days um, you know prayers go out to those families that had to deal with it I know there's quite a few deaths from that particular tornado and um, but you know tis the season guys you know I've, I hit um, one thunderstorm just the other night and I tried so hard but for my cameras weren't working. I the GoPro wouldn't turn on, and with me driving, I'm not gonna you know play with around with the cameras. So there's really nothing much I can do about it. So we ended up missing out on that one. But I'll tell you, man, what a light show! It was absolutely stunning. So that sparked me to go through all of my equipment. So I went through um, all of the GoPros that I have. I deleted all of the files in them. I've deleted everything with them. I reformatted the SD cards that are in them. Um, so I got everything up and going. I ended up uh, deleting the app, re-downloading the app, make, make sure that the firmware on the GoPros were up to date. So I got everything updated. Now everything's working. And uh, so that's taken care of. 
and now that I finally got everything taken care of, I'm now stuck on the freaking night shift. So, typically I don't like to record at night because there's really not a whole lot to see. But I'm going to attempt it um, because I keep saying that I want you guys to see the ins and outs. I want you guys to see, you know, what goes on, we'll say, backstage. Um, you know, because it's not all about, you know, starting your shift at 6 o'clock in the morning and drive all day. And, you know, I mean, your schedule can change instantly like mine did i mean this whole this whole load here got all completely screwed up and um nice jake oh, i love that sound i don't know if you guys just heard that but oh, i wish my truck made that sound ah well the only sound mine makes is sam telling me what to go what to do so um where was I? Oh, this load here. So what ended up happening was... Um, yesterday we brought a load to Arkansas. And... We shut down yesterday. Did a 10 hour last night. First thing this morning, made the delivery. We, uh, after the delivery, two and a half hours... We took up, uh, let's see, went up the 49 to Joplin, Missouri. It was only about 90 miles. And then had to do another 10 hour because the load that my next load doesn't pick up till 9, 10 o'clock tonight. So it's kind of like doing two 10 hours back to back. It sucks, yes, but. You know, this is the time of year where freight is just now going to start making its turn. Where we can have pretty much pick and choose of the litter. Of the litter. But, um, you know, right now it's still slow. I mean, freight's garbage. And I'm not the only one. I mean, you know, Trucker Will, I know he's been struggling with some loads. And, um, you know, a couple other drivers I know, they're struggling with their loads. So kind of right now this time of the year you, you gotta take what you can get and uh so like i said we shut down did another 10 hour and then um yeah so we'll pick this load up here in joplin missouri we're gonna take some back roads um i think we're gonna take state route 60 um, and towards Tennessee because with yesterday's tornadoes apparently there's a bunch of power lines down there's trees down all over Interstate 40 and um, so they got a huge section of the 40 is closed now this is another part of trip planning and you know for those of you that are coming into the business and stuff like that you know, understand that trip planning is a major part of what we do out here. Um, knowing what the weather's like. I mean, for example, look at the I-80 right now. The I-80's closed. They had a massive pileup, multiple deaths, trucks all over the place. They've got high winds, massive blizzards, you know, blowing snow, and... Now, Crete has a Facebook page for the drivers and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I give it up to them drivers there. So many people go on that page and they post updates on different areas of the country. And there was somebody that went on that page today and said that they've been shut down for four days because it's not either the road's closed or when they do open it, it's still not even safe enough to, to drive on. So, you know... To me, I was just talking to a buddy of mine about it, and it's like, you know, why wouldn't... If so, if they were to send me a load right now, say, for example, I'm in Joplin, Missouri, they send me a load up going up to, say, Boise, Idaho or something, I know that I'm going to go up that route, probably end up taking the 80 through Cheyenne, Wyoming, and stuff like that. If you know that the roads 
are horrible up there. There's already been a massive pile up, multiple deaths, blowing snow, frozen roads. The 80's been closed on and off for the last week and a half. You know, here at Crete, you can deny that load. You can put in, denied, you don't want that load, give you something else. Now, I know a lot of companies out there, they are forced dispatch, but luckily enough here at Crete, we are. But, you know, for them, if you if you don't trip plan it, and you don't look into this stuff before you accept your load, this is the stuff that you are going to run into. Um, had I not done what I do, I may have taken the 40 out through Tennessee and then find out the hard way that it's closed. Now, I've got to pull over somewhere off the 40 and either find an alternate route or shut down until they open it if there is no alternate route. So, you know, doing what I did, now I know that I can take a different route, come in through the north side of Nashville, Tennessee, and make it to where I got to go without any headaches that I'm aware of. Um, all the research that I did shows that the roads are all open and that they're clear. There's a lot of damage to buildings and stuff like that, but the roads that I need to go on are clear. <coughs> so, you know, keep that in the back of your mind that trip planning is huge when it comes to, you know, driving a truck. And this is the stuff that I want to turn my videos into. I want to turn my videos into you guys being able to see what it's really like you know it's not just about seeing a little bit of driving footage and then you know we'll talk about the shipper you know i want you guys to see everything it is that we do um unfortunately i cannot give too many details as far as our load assignments shippers and receivers like names and addresses and stuff like that that stuff i can't do but at least, you know, you guys will learn that stuff when you come out on the road. You know, what shippers and receivers and pickup numbers and bill of ladings and all that good stuff. But as far as, you know, being out on the road as a truck driver, you know, I want you guys to see what it's really like. Yes, it's, this job is not for everybody. It's really not. And I've said it in so many videos. I know Trucker Will have said it. I know Nip said it. Billy Range have said it. Trucking is not for everybody. But for those that it is for, when it's in your blood, it's stuck. You're there. You're stuck with it. Um, and, you know, that's where I am. I mean, this is, you know, like when I came back out, I had mentioned to uh, April, you know, that my, I bleed blacktop. I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. So, you know, this is something that I enjoy doing. There's a lot of reasons why I enjoy doing it. And, um, you know, it, again, it is what it is. So, there's my rant. Um, truck's running real good. Knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with her. I know a lot of people, for some reason this week, not me, I've had uh, truck problems. I know my buddy Josh, his, his truck was in the shop for quite a while. He just spent uh, almost $6,000 repairing his truck. And um, Trucker Will, his truck was in the shop there for quite a while. So luckily enough, uh, oh, and Jeremy is another one. He's got a uh, Kenworth T680. And his was in the shop too. So luckily enough, um, Rosie's doing all right. Yes, I named it Rosie for now because couldn't think of anything else. So Rosie's doing good. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Got a little bit of sleep. So we slept all night last night and then got another four and a half, five hours in today. So should be all right. We're going to get ready here, start our pre-trip, go in, get our coffee and uh, make way over to our shipper, which we are only, we're only about 15 minutes away from the shipper. Um, looking at the satellite view of it, looks like a pretty decent place. I don't know how
how busy they're going to be or how long it's going to take them to, you know, get me loaded. But, um, oh, that's the other thing. Crap, I got to remember that. I got to put reefer fuel in this thing before I go anywhere. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Driving footage in this video, it's going to be dark, I guess. We're going to see how it goes. Um, weather looks nice and clear, so we shouldn't have any... That's one thing I can't stand personally. I hate driving at night in the rain. I don't mind driving at night. When it starts raining, you can't see shit. You know, they, they paint these lines, and then the, the lines themselves fade, and then next thing you know, you can't tell where the road starts or where the road ends. So, um, yeah, I hate driving at night in the rain. It's nice to get uh, the thunderstorms off, you know, as far as, like, on camera and whatnot, but not good driving conditions. So, but we're going to record some of it. We'll see how it goes. And um, take it from there. I mean, like I said, not from now on, I want you guys to see daytime nighttime doesn't matter we're gonna record it and um you know you're gonna see what i see you're gonna go through what i go through and all that happy horse shit so that's that so for now i'll see you soon
got scaled. And I mean, it's not the best of weights, but it is legal. It is very much so legal.
yeah, so I want to go in and check out this truck, this truck stop here, see what they got. The sheriff's rolling in now. I don't know what the hell he wants. Oops. I don't know. It says it's for trucks. Yeah, there's a sign out there. It says truck entrance, so I'm not too concerned about the sheriff's here. Where do you just go? Oh, he left. He ain't paying no mind to me. But yeah, so now we got about 350, 355 miles to go. And we're going to finish that up. Now, this load technically doesn't deliver till tomorrow morning, I think. I think it was like 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. But it is a drop load, so I can really get it there. They said some anytime after 4 a.m. They they want it there, so we'll get that done tonight. Um, I still got about two hours before I can do anything, so that'll give me enough time to get cleaned up and clean up the truck a little bit. Go check out this Travel Plaza, see what they got. We'll test out their coffee. Hopefully, they have some. Get ready for our afternoon and evening. Right now it's uh, about 12:30, so that's a couple more hours, and uh, we'll finish this run here. I'm seeing um, a lot of damage reports in Nashville, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can make it through all this from that tornado. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I, something like 44,000 people are like without a power. And, but, that yeah, well. Is what it is. Yeah. The night shift did. Um, I mean, I started working on this video. Started editing it. You know, I took all the video footage off the cameras and cut it all up and then put it into pieces and then threw it in the editor and uh, it looks like it's it's turning out okay I mean I'm I'm okay with it I don't know how you guys feel about it so if you've made it this far in the video you know leave a comment down below what you guys think of the night runs I mean I know this one was a little bit different because I've been driving through this park or forest or whatever the hell this is and uh yeah, that was all the way from Springfield till. It was going to be quite a ways. That um, it's just nothing but trees all the way down both sides of the road. What's real nice though is there's no traffic. I'm kind of liking this, um, the U.S. roads. There was no traffic last night. That was nice. But it, it, like I said, it, it gets dangerous with the wildlife. And the last thing I want to do is, you know, have Rose hit Bambi, and we can't have that. Trucker L doesn't need to be down with, down with brand new truck already. So, all right, guys, I'm going to get cleaned up. We're going to go check this place out, and I'm going to bring you guys with me. I'll see you in a few. the moment I step out of the out of the truck to start recording I get a phone call of course but I was able to take a couple of snapshots of, of outside the place um, the inside was pretty nice we got a lot of neat stuff and uh, the chicken fingers get the chicken fingers you won't regret it nothing like having chicken fingers for breakfast so, alright guys, so we're just going to sit here and watch the clock tick. And then when it's our time, we'll get uh, rolling out of here. I'll see you guys then.
Yeah, buddy. So we made it to the receiver. And now I'm just writing up the crap ton of paperwork that I got to do for this. Because we also have detention paperwork from our wonderful shipper that took four and a half hours. And then I got to clear out this call. Now they ended up giving us an another load. We are picking up right here, the same place we dropped off. Um, the only thing is, is I don't get any of the information for that load until I clear out the first one. Ah well, such is life. But our next load, we're put, like I said, we're picking up here at this shipper here in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And we're gonna go to McDonough, Georgia. Which is where we are going to shut down and do a 34 because I'm out of hours. And I started running on recaps, but now it's to the point where I'm having to wait until midnight in order to get my time back. So if I get like, say, seven or eight hours, then I'll drive my seven, eight hours, shut down at seven o'clock in the morning. I don't get any more time back until midnight. So to me, that is a waste of time. So it's just easier to do a 34 reset and get all my time back. And then next week we go home. What the hell was my trailer now? 839, 280? Yeah, so next week we go home. Um, should be home by Thursday, I think. You know, this is one of the things that I was talking to you guys about, you know, behind the scenes. All of the paperwork that we got to do. It's crazy. The paperwork is, is nuts. I could actually put a filing cabinet in here and have it filled up in the first year. Uh, let's see, appointment time. Zero three, zero three, twenty. Um, yeah, fun times. So our appointment time was at 2100. We arrived at 20. And we left there at 0045. 0304. 20. 0045. Fun times. Well, I'm going to end this video here. Um, I'm probably not going to vlog the next one. Because this one's going to be all jacked up. Um, time wise. I mean, plus it's going to be all dark and everything too. So, plus I got to get all the footage from today off of these and all that good stuff. And right now I just want to get out of here. So, I will see you guys in Georgia.